All right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And it has been so thrilling this February, featuring so many incredible women in science and exploration from across the globe. Every February, in commemoration of the 11th, which is the International Day for Women in STEM. We kick out all the men all month long and just do a slew of incredible programs. And this month, more than ever. In addition to our epic Women Blaze Trails Fest, which we did the 12th through the 14th with 50 speakers, we've hosted over 30 other broadcasts featuring incredible women from around the globe. So thank you so much for continuing to tune in live or on YouTube in this strangest of school years as we feature such neat people. Today, we are joined by new speakers and a new topic for us, which is really exciting. So, the team from the Canadian Cancer Society's Research Information Outreach Team is here today to talk to us a little bit about what cancer is, some of the latest and greatest in research, some of the cool therapeutics and things that are going on in the field, and some of the careers involved in cancer research and outreach, which is very exciting. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Zainab. She is going to blow our minds with all this cool stuff they get to do. We're going to learn a lot, have a bit of a conversation at the end, and have a great time. So Zainab, thank you so much for joining us today. Come on. Thank you. So much, Thank yeah, you. This is so much fun and so unique for us. We've been doing a partnership with the Gardner Foundation lately with a lot of really cool biomedical mm -hmm. research, but it's always nice to dive in on a, a new and unique topic, especially mm -hmm. after sharks and sea turtles, which we just wrapped <laughs> up with last hour. Um, so we're yeah. attack entirely. And I, for one, can't wait. So please take us away and thank, thank you so, you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, everyone. So my name is Zaina, and I'm just going to go share my screen now with you. And we're gonna, today we're gonna talk about cancer. So here we are. So Emily and I are here from the Research Information Outreach Team. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later, but we're here to talk about cancer biology and new research. And it, although it is a very, it's a difficult topic because I know some of us have people in our lives that have been affected by cancer, but there is still amazing research going on that is trying to help understand cancer and how to treat cancer and make people feel better and overcome it. So without further ado, we're going to get started. And so we're the research information outreach team. Emily and I are both cancer researchers who volunteer with this group, which is led by the Canadian Cancer Society. And we want to basically share what we know about cancer and highlight that current research and you can check us out on our website at torontoriot.com. Let me get my pointer here. So just right here. And we have blog posts and stuff like that. So if you want to get more into the complicated nitty gritty of cancer and how it works, you can read some of our blog, blog posts. So before we go into what cancer is, we need to understand how our normal cells work. So human tissue is made up of cells. We have trillions of cells. We are all cells. So humans can actually grow and heal because our cells divide or they split in two. So here you can see how one cell becomes two cells and then that one also splits into two. And then during this process, cells actually replicate their DNA. And DNA is what makes us who we are. It's how our body can function well and each cell has DNA in them. And normal cells know when to stop dividing. So they know when they're not needed anymore and they don't need to split so much and they can stay as they are and do their job. And then when needed, cells can even undergo a process that's called apoptosis or cell death. So the cells can die. And apoptosis, you can kind of see from this image, you can kind of remember it by the pop. So it's sort of like a little mini explosion. So they, when we want to replace our cells, if they're not working or if, we, or, if we, or if they're too old, we can replace them with new cells by dividing and then having those older ones go away. So new cells know what to do because our DNA can get passed on during that cell division or that cell split. So DNA tells the cells to make certain proteins. So this little chunk of DNA here is called a gene, and we'll go into that a little bit more, but it's basically the instructions or the recipe for making certain things for our body. And this, for example, is a protein. So it's a molecule. It's not the kind of protein we eat like meat or stuff like that. So it's a little molecule that helps our cells work the way they're supposed to. So, uh, a cell is very much like a city. So this here is the city of Toronto and you can see, see here on the inside of a cell, just a little bit more color, colorful for you. 
And the workers of this um, city are the proteins. And proteins carry out all the functions in the cell. So they help our cells to breathe. They help our cells to remove waste, things we don't want in the cell anymore. Uh, they help our cells to make energy and to do what they can do and do their jobs. And then they can also help our cells divide and keep going and splitting and copying the DNA. So proteins help with all of that. In a skin cell, for example, proteins tell the cell to, they can tell them to divide. So this is the protein telling the cells, you can divide, you can stop dividing. It can even tell them to make melanin. So skin cells in melanin is basically a pigment that can change the color of your skin. It's also, this type of cell is also find, found in your eye. So it can do um, color in your eye and pigment in your eye. So cells rely on these proteins to work properly. And if something is wrong with the cell's proteins, there are also proteins to actually tell those cells to die. Because if something's wrong, it's not working, then the cell needs, or the protein needs to say to the cell, okay, that's enough, something's wrong, we need to um, get rid of you and replace you with something that's functional and new. But what happens when the workers or the proteins either stop working or they don't work the way they're supposed to? And this is where cancer comes in. So cancer is the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the body, cells that have those weird proteins that aren't working or are too old or something like that. So this is the cancer cell right here. So they have these abnormal functions where it's not working properly. So cancer cells don't know actually when to stop dividing. They're basically our own cells, but they've gone rogue. They have a mind of their own. And cancer cells can't sense the environment. So, for example, when a protein is talking to them and they're sending out these signals in the environment and saying, that's enough, you need to stop dividing, you, got, you guys are out of control, the cancer cell won't listen and it'll keep dividing. And they can also, proteins can also tell the cells, the cancer cells to do their apoptosis protocol. They need to tell them to die, but then cancer cells also won't listen to that and they won't die. Cancer cells are also unique because they can actually recruit blood vessels so they can make the blood vessels come to them to feed on them. And now blood vessels are important for normal cells too, because normal cells need all these good nutrients and uh, oxygen from our blood in order to do their jobs and work well. It's kind of like their fuel. So cancer cells can use it for their advantage and they can recruit those blood vessels so they can eat too. And they can also enter the bloodstream and travel to different places. And this is what scientists call metastasize. So you can go from one place to another, and this is how cancer spreads. So these general characteristics that I talked about, uh, scientists call this the hallmarks of cancer. So we talked about how the cell divides and they keep dividing and they won't listen to signals from the proteins to tell them to stop dividing. They can resist any uh, when the proteins tell them to die, they can resist cell death and they won't die. So they can kind of be immortal, even though they're getting old and they're getting worse. And then they can also even get those blood vessels to come to them so that they can get their fuel to do more damage. So how do things go wrong? The way they go wrong is because of mutations. And this isn't the cool kind of superhero type of mutation, like the Hulk or something like that. The way that cancer is caused is by these DNA changes or mutations in the DNA. So in, like I said, a little chunk of the DNA is known as a gene. So we have genes that tell us what our hair color is, what our eye color is, but we also have these sections of DNA that tell our proteins what to do and how to be shaped. So there's problems in that area and that's where we can get, can the, that where um, cancer changes can take place. So say this is a, a healthy piece of DNA and it's a tiny piece of the DNA or section, which is a gene, and it'll make that protein like we discussed earlier. But if there's a mutation in that piece of DNA, we can get weird things happening to our protein. So we can get a weird shaped protein. We can get no protein at all. So this means it's not doing its job because it's doing it wrong or there's nothing to nothing there to actually do the job. Or we can get too much of a good thing, which is bad at, in this case. So we'll get too much of that protein. And that means that that protein has too much power. And we don't want it to go crazy and do the same job, even though we only need it to do it once. You can also inherit mutations, so it can be passed down from different family members. This is something we can't control, and it happens. And then there's also environmental 
uh, mutations. So things like uh, the UV ray from the sun. So this is why we wear sunscreen, so we can protect our skin from getting any of, the, any of that damage or any mutations. There's bad, there's bad chemicals in cigarettes and in pollution that can damage our lung cells, and that's how the lungs could get mutations. Even bacteria and viruses can cause mutations in our cells. And then there's also, uh, during cell division, while our cells are splitting and they're copying our DNA, our uh, cells might make a mistake. They might uh, make a mistake while they're copying the DNA. They put the wrong letter down. Something could go wrong. And that's totally normal. Our bodies make mistakes every single day while we're splitting cells. But our cells have a really cool uh, spell checking system, basically, that can spot the error or the mistake. And they can go and say, oh, fix that. That's wrong. So they'll go and fix the DNA so that the code is right. But in the case of cancer, when cells keep dividing and they keep splitting and, uh, and doubling their DNA and copying it, there's more of a risk of getting more mutations because the cancer cells on our, are unsupervised. They don't listen to the environment, right? So they'll keep going. They'll say, there's no mistake. Don't worry about it. And they'll keep copying their DNA. So in summary, there's some things we can control and there's some things we can't control. So for example, UV light, um, if you wanna wear sunscreen, that'll protect us. Things like viruses, I mean, if it, it, it happens, we can, all we can do is our wash our hands and get our, um, you know, uh, be able to overcome that by normal uh, ways of trying to not get ourselves sick. But again, it's also possible. And then there's also from changes from the, family that's hereditary, so it might be inherited. And even as we grow old, as our cells divide, they're not as good at it anymore. So then we can have more mistakes, which can get, uh, as we get more mistakes, there could be more opportunities for mutations. So there's some things we can control, some things we can't. And scientists learn about mutations by a process called sequencing. So sequencing is just basically figuring out the code of our healthy DNA to understand how our normal DNA looks. And then they compare that DNA to those patients with cancer. So we look at our regular healthy DNA to mutated cancerous DNA. And this is basically for scientists, it's a giant game of spot the difference. And it's just a little bit more complicated. And we're looking at the healthy DNA versus the mutated DNA. Now moving on to cancer treatment. So there are three ways to treat cancer. There's surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. These are the three main ways. So in surgery, you can remove the tumor or tumor is the group of cancer cells from the body. And then you can use radiation, which uses beams of intense energy to kill the cancer cells. So traditional radiation can affect areas near cancer as well. So unfortunately before, these radiation therapies could also affect our normal cells and we don't want that. So that's where scientists come in and they figured out new technology where it could help us better direct the radiation to the cancer cells and only the cancer cells. And then there's also chemotherapy, which most of you might know as chemo. So that uses drugs to kill cancer cells. And now traditional uh, chemotherapy drugs kill all fast growing cells. There's certain areas of our body that have to just have fast growing cells and that could inclu include normal cells as well. So not just cancer cells and that's bad too. But now with new technology and new drugs, we have the ability to target that are cancer specific muta mutated proteins. So only those proteins that have those mutations in them instead of our normal proteins. And then we can actually combine some of those. So we can work by treating multiple mutations because usually uh, people live, uh, living with or affected by cancer would have multiple mutations in different types of genes. So we can Maybe one gene is better uh, targeted by radiation and another one is better with chemotherapy drugs. So we can combine them so that we can hit both of them at the same time and get rid of all the bad ones that are in there, all the bad mutations. And then we keep track of this by medical imaging. So this is a MRI scanner. So you can take a whole picture of the body and see after treatment, what happens? Are the cells go? Are the cancer cells going away? We can track the response of the patient and how they're doing as they get uh, these pictures taken after their treatments. So this is what scientists ask ourselves. We ask ourselves this all the time: What can we improve in these treatments, and how can we make it better? How can we treat the, treat our patients better so that um, it's faster, or we can detect it faster? All these things, and this is where. Uh, you come in and maybe in the future, 
you might be the one that discovers that next step and figuring out how to do it better than us. So some of the careers that you can find in science, there's so many things you can do. Even if you like science just a little bit, you can combine so many things. So you can work in so many places. You can work in the traditional hospital. You can go into research labs. Like Emily and I, we work in research labs. You can work in biotechnology or pharmacy. You can work in the government, even in nutrition and looking at people's diets, what they should eat, what they shouldn't eat, things like that. So in hospitals, you got the traditional medical doctor, pharmacist, researcher, medical imaging specialist. So you can take those pictures of people or be a nurse or work in a laboratory. And this is me in the lab and I'm just hanging out with my sister. I inv had invited her that day. We were listening to music and blasting it loud. And I'm here taking care of some cancer cells because I wanna study how they work. And this right here is a little juice basically not for us, they're for the cells and they have all that good nutrients that kind of is similar to what the blood would bring to the cancer cells. So I'm just in the lab and um, you know, you get to work with all this cool equipment at the beginning, you saw a microscope and I can see the cells under the microscope. Oh, there it is right there as a feature. So it's really, it's really interesting to get to, you know, work in a lab too. But there's other ways you can do, you don't have to just focus on, you know, it's not just a picture of being a doctor or a nurse or working as a researcher. You can ask, actually do different things. Like if you like to try and invent new things, you can be in pharmacology and working on figuring out the new research drug that'll help patients get better. And you can be a scientist, you can work in biotechnology. If you like to engineer things and figure out how things work, you can invent cool new machines to help detect cancer or even help treat patients. If you like to write and you like science, you can be a medical writer or you can be a journalist too. So you can report on the latest science news and health news. If you like to make big changes, you can be a lawyer, you can help scientists make their discoveries a reality or may to allow them to take ownership of their own inventions. You can be a lawmaker and make big changes. You know, you can think of, um, it, it, you can be in government as well. So this is the Minister of Health of Canada and she works alongside our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. You can also help fundraise and make money for researchers so that they can use it to do their research and figure out what they need to do next. There's endless possibilities. You can also, if you like to do what I'm doing right here, where you can communicate science and talk about it, you can be a science commuter, communicator or a teacher or a professor. And this is Science Sam. She has an Instagram. She talks about and she goes on different, you know, talk shows and stuff like that and talks about science. If you like to draw, you can be a graphic designer or a medical illustrator. You can be the person who draws those pictures that people find in their textbooks and in websites and stuff like that. Um, you can also be in media, so you can be in YouTube, or TV, or movies, stuff like that. And I personally have a podcast too, and I, uh, I have a group of people that I talk about science with. And these guys are ASAP Science, and they have a YouTube show where they talk about um, certain science concepts. This guy right here is Bill Nye the Science Guy. Back in my day, when I was younger, he used to have a TV show all about science and doing experiments that you can do at home. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he talks about uh, space and he's written like three, four books on space and he has uh, TV shows and stuff like that and talks about all these things, you know, the next new Netflix special. And if you're interested in cancer research and careers in cancer research, there's a lot of avenues that you can go into and study different things. It's not just understanding cancer or maybe their treatments. You can go into prevention, which is what can we do before so that we don't um, have these mutations. So for example, looking into cigarettes and tobacco or healthy eating and physical activity or even the environment and what affects us. You can also go in looking at the traditional cancer biology and how to diagnose or treat or how to basically detect cancer earlier so that we can treat people earlier, which is much better because it's easier to, for most cancers, it's easier to treat it if you find it out, find out earlier. You can even look at quality of life. So how do we, if someone is affected by cancer, how do we make their life better? How do we give them more support? And if they've survived it, what happens when, um, you know, with their mental health, with helping them, you know, figure things out and um, have their sort of, you know, look after their journey in as a patient with cancer.
So this is our group here from Riot Research Information Outreach Team. And what I want to say about this is that we all went into cancer research and sciences, but we all have different life goals and different goals in our um, careers. So even though we all went into the same thing, we're all wanting to do something different. So me, I'm here and I like to do science communication. I like to talk to you all. I like to do the podcast. I like to do little YouTube videos of um, lab tours and stuff like that. I uh, This is Megan here and she wants to be a professor, for example, and Emily who's here, who's going into pharmacy. And then Patty here is into biotechnology and figuring out the next new drug. And this is Biran. He wants to uh, work on brain cancer and research brain cancer. So who knows? Maybe next time this could be you. And you could do something as well with science or cancer-related research. And just for those of you who are in high school or going into high school, we have a big event coming up on April 22nd, 23rd uh, in the afternoons after 1 p.m. And this is only for high school students. So if it's called Let's Talk Cancer and we are, Riot is collaborating with Let's Talk Science. You get to learn about exciting new advances in cancer research from scientists and you get to participate in interactive activities, even win prizes. So if you do want to re register, it opens in early March and the link is just right here. And um, yeah, this is just where I got my pictures. And thank you so much for listening. And if we have any questions, we can go to them with... Um, with Emily, we'll bring her in too. With Emily, yeah. We'll hold gang in here. Hi, Hi. Emily. That was great. What a cool talk and it's a great. Yeah. I know your bread and butter is a much older audience, so I appreciate <laughs> you bringing it down. It's super accessible. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to dive in with questions, ladies. Um, so both of you can answer these however you want to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to share some on the screen, and if folks on YouTube have any they want to share as well, please type them in the chat bar. Very easy to take them. Uh, mm -hmm. But for one, you know, a lot of people, you mentioned that almost everyone is touched by cancer uh, in some fashion. So our, our main question what can I do to lower my risk of cancer? If I leave this broadcast and I'm young or old or whatever, is there anything I can do that really jumps out? Uh, well, I guess uh, I've said I said some of them during the presentation. You know, you can wear sunscreen and um, you know the targeting certain things like that, or you know, no smoking. That's good not to do that. Emily, do you have any other? <laughs> Um, I mean, there's a lot of research coming out about even just healthy diets and, and it's really yeah. just taking care of your body and making sure that um, all your cells are operating the best way that they can because that, then there's there's less of a chance of them mutating or, or going bad if you're, if you're really taking care of your body all the ways that we know how to. It's funny, we've covered mental health here, we've covered heart disease and things, and it seems to be the same thing around the, across the board, you know, don't do things that we all know are harmful, exercise when you can, eat a healthy diet, all those things really do make, eat your broccoli, kids, is the moral <laughs> can help prevent cancer, it's a good thing. So one thing we learned about uh, with one of our other biomedical programs recently was CRISPR, and CRISPR is really exciting and unifying a lot of people, so can CRISPR help with cancer therapies? Is there anything that we can do with this new technology that might help us with cancer down the road? Yeah, Emily, sorry. Well, I wasn't uh, sure if you, if you had a, a thing to say. Um, there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, CRISPR use in kind of our um, progression of understanding of different cancers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not super up to date on whether anyone's trying to use it as a therapeutic because we don't really necessarily want to get into the process of actually editing live exactly. humans because that goes down a quite the rabbit hole of, uh, mm. of genetics that way. Um, but we are using a lot of CRISPR in the lab these days to, to kind of understand mm. cancer cells that we grow in little, um, in the lab, like the video that you saw they end up doing. And actually there's a really great article on our website that we basically answered a lot of these questions on CRISPR. So if you want to check that out, it goes way in more depth, so. Yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. That's I'm going to try and actually get that and bring it in so we can have a, a picture of it in the in the banner on the bottom. So that would be very cool. So I'll check yeah. that out in just a minute, ladies. Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right. So with cancers, there's a lot of them. And one of the things that certainly I've heard about over the last years is that it's it's more useful to think of cancer as a series of diseases rather than one monolithic thing. So is there a cancer that's the worst one of the whole lot or, or cancers that are worse in general? Any way to differentiate them? 
Um, there's some cancers that are harder to treat because they're detected later on. So I've worked with, for example, during my master's in my school, I worked with ovarian cancer and that's something that's detected way later on when it's just too late. And it's like, it's very, it's much more um, harsher in terms of trying to get treatment to those types of patients. So I've worked with that before. Pancreatic cancer is also very similar. And um, that one's also, um, it's, it's kind of all about how, when, when we can detect it and the earlier, the better. So I know those two for sure are um, on the list of uh, difficult cancers. Emily, anything to share or add? I mean, yeah, like pancreatic cancer is a really big one. There's a lot of brain cancers, unfortunately, that are hard to treat because the traditional things like surgery and, and radiation and chemo, it's really hard to get those treatments in there without affecting the rest of the rest of your brain. So right. there's a lot of work being done on trying to, to access yeah, those, those cancers easier. Well, I, I think that that's a really important point. You mentioned that the earlier you catch a cancer in general, it means it's much more likely to be uh, have a good outcome. And you mentioned that the impact of the treatment. I mean, a lot of our treatments nowadays are very, you know, we're, we're attacking a, a targeted thing with an army. And so you have sort of collateral damage within the body. Um, so again, as, as treatments get better, we'll hopefully, uh, you know, work towards eliminating those, which leads to our next question, which is, you know, cancer investment, there's, there's always cancer ads on TVs, on billboards for many, many decades now. What impact has that had? Have we cured any cancers? Are there things that we've really had a positive difference where it used to be a, a death sentence and now it's something where people are, are typically fine? Mm. Well, it's definitely less scary than it was 20 years ago. But um, there's lots of that money goes towards people trying to research certain, like I said, we were talking about those different mutations and that's the problem with cancer is that all of them are so unique. And even if someone has the same cancer, it doesn't mean that they both respond to treatment the same. So that's why it's sort of, um, this is sort of where Emily and I were looking into talking about whether or not we should talk about personalized medicine so that it's geared towards each person and their, and this personalized medicine means that it's just geared to the individual person's uh, mutations and their DNA because all of us are unique, just like we are, you know, looking at each other, we're all different. So cancers are also all different and it's, it's unique to each person. And that's why it's a little bit um, harder to say, you know, one cure all thing, but there's lots of advances that are happening right now and it's still continuing. And we're looking at different, everyone is looking at different things or the, the same thing to speed up the process. And there are lots of advances in different treatments and how, like I said, there's new technology and new drugs that are actually targeting things that are specific and is basically making it much better for these patients nowadays, so. Yeah, there are like certain cancers that I wouldn't say are necessarily cured mm -hmm. and use that word, but there are certain um, mutations that we do know how to treat now and mm -hmm. so, if your cancer only has one mutation, then there are um, pretty good prognosis on, on a few cancers that, that we do know how to treat certain really common mutations in those cancers. Um, yeah, that's very exciting. I mean, you, you mentioned personalized medicine. We've talked about CRISPR a little bit. So like all these new developments that are happening in a wide array of, of you know, biology uh, are really leading to positive impacts in cancer treatment and, and understanding. So that's a, that's a hopeful sign and, and very exciting for, for our, our kids that are growing up in, in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking of these developments, is there any, I mean, this is, it might be an impossible question. Is there a biggest development in preventing cancer in the last decade or, or so? Like, is there something that really jumps out like, oh, we didn't have this tool in our, our arsenal before, and now we do, and it's really incredible stuff. Is it personalized medicine or? That is definitely a up and coming um, area of research for sure. Um, yeah, I would say personalized medicine, but I, I think I'm just trying to see what else would jump out of me. Everything's happening at once. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I work a lot in, in medical imaging kind of technologies mm -hmm. and, and the advancements that have been made there lately in, in MRI and other mm -hmm. kinds of um, imaging things that, that you might hear about or experience. Um, the advancements there are really uh, are helping us to, to catch things and diagnose um, cancers much earlier in in a less invasive way than when you hear about doing biopsies and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Very, very cool. I, I must admit with MRIs, I have no excuse to get one. I don't want to drive up healthcare costs in the world, but I've always wanted an MRI because it'd just be so much fun. It's like a magic magnet tube. Um, yeah, exactly. Very cool. So you, you, you ended your program with this, this great message that we're getting from astronauts, we're getting it from cave divers all over the world. No matter what the topic is, there are so many different avenues into it. There's so many careers that touch upon that in some way that are really exciting to think about. You know, if you're if you're a kid and you don't love science, if you don't love biology, you have no interest in medicine whatsoever, there are still ways that you can get involved in cancer treatments, cancer outreach, cancer, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So for you both personally, and I'd love to, we'll start with Emily this time, uh, mm -hmm. we'll do what is a favorite part of your job? Is there something that really jumps out that you absolutely love to do? Oh, well, my job, I'm actually a chemist, so I get to do, you know, all those kinds of lab experiments that you do in the classroom and you're mixing things together and making making new things. Um, so it's always fun. Every day is every day's different. Every day is a new experiment for me. So mm -hmm. that's what I enjoy about, about being a chemist myself. Mm -hmm. Zainab? Yeah, um, I love to learn new things and I'm always learning new things when I'm in uh, cancer research. So uh, I'm a researcher too and I, I like to work with cells and I always learn something new. And I think that's the my favorite part is that it's not like, a, it's never a dull moment. You know, it's always exciting because um, something new happens and that's kind of the beauty of experiments too. Sometimes it doesn't work, but when it does work, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's really exciting. You know, I, I love when careers get to have that sort of uh, thing be a part of it where it's a little bit different every day. And Emily, I love to hear from a chemist. We have so few chemists who can speak to <laughs> every picture of a scientist that every child has ever seen is a picture of someone looking longingly at a beaker. <laughs> blue or green. Does that ever happen? Are you in the lab ever and just be like, oh my God, it's a flask and it's blue. That's not, you've got to I will say that there is rarely blue. Most of the liquids are clear or maybe slightly yellow. Okay, so we're sure if people see that image, if it's bluish, they should be like alarmed. Like if not, <laughs> something's gone terribly wrong in the experiment. Uh, yeah. Ladies, this has been so much fun. Is there any last message you want to share with kids? And we'll, uh, both of you, please do answer. Any last message you want to share with kids, um, what, where they can learn more, what they can do to, you know, again, uh, I guess understand more about this this thing that impacts so many of us. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can definitely check out the Let's Talk Cancer event if you're going into high school, and it's really interesting. It goes into more depth, and I would just recommend um, you know, uh, it's science is interesting, and it's also not the only thing you can do. So, it's it's really fun to mix and match what you love, and you don't have to always have a one track mind when it comes to what you want to do and what kind of career you want to take. So, yeah. Yeah, I would also, you know, shout out, we have our website um, and there's different chapters of, of Riot. So we're from Toronto, but there's other ones and each, mm -hmm. each kind of chapter has its own blogs and posts about um, even different careers and kind of resources for, for high school students or students in general about what to look into if it's something that you're interested in. Um, and yeah, we have Instagram and stuff, so always feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Yeah. Fantastic. We are going to unleash the horde upon you of questions. <laughs> and you mentioned the, the Riot website. So Riot Team, Canadian Cancer Society, doing just incredible work. So, so nice to get to share uh, all your insight with us today. And I really appreciate you both sitting down with us. It's, it's nice to dive in on a topic that's pretty unusual for our kids. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing everything today. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we'll wrap up here. We'll 